Hey there, my name is Kathy, and thank you so much for coming to my channel, Crafty Kathy. If this is the first time that you've ever been to my channel, I'd like to say welcome and thank you so much for stopping by to check me out. And you guys that are returning, you know I love you from the bottom of my heart. Well, today I'm doing something a little bit different than what I normally do. It's no secret that people have been making tiered trays from Dollar Tree items since crafters saw that it's so much cheaper to buy your stuff at Dollar Tree and you can turn it into something that looks like a tiered tray that came from Hobby Lobby. Well, this is no different in that aspect, but when I was browsing the aisles looking for some Halloween decor, I saw the cutest little bucket that said Haunted House on the front. And the shape of this bucket made me think of a galvanized tin that my grandma had. And I was like, hmm. And those little wheels in my mind started turning. And guess what? By the time I got home, I had hatched a plan. Can you believe that? So I wanted to make this tear tray with all Dollar Tree materials. That way, everybody can have easy access to it. You can whip by the Dollar Tree and grab your stuff and then whip back home and make it if you want to. Now, there are a few materials that I did not get at the Dollar Tree. There are two washers that go with a screw and a, one screw, but most people have those things laying around their house. If not, you can get them at Walmart or any hardware store for like 50 cents for each piece. Also, paint stir sticks, which you can get those free at Walmart. And there is a spray paint that I use to make the galvanized process, and it's called Hammered Rust-Oleum. And I got mine at Walmart. So, to be fair, I did make it with 99% Dollar Tree items, but there are a couple things that you may need. So, I hope you guys like my version. Now, one more thing I wanted to say. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what in the world are you waiting for? Come on, hit that little red button that's down on the bottom. And then there's a little bell beside it and you can press all and YouTube will let you know every time that I upload a video. So, without further ado, there's nothing else to be said except we have to bring on our executive producer and sing our silly little theme song. Now, just to let you know, we have an executive producer, if you've never been to this channel before, and he's kind of tough on us. He makes us sing this silly little theme song at the end, but it's really quick and it's kind of cute. So I hope you like it, and then we're going to jump into the DIY. All right, guys, I found our executive producer in the back totaling up numbers. So, are you ready to sing our silly little theme song? Okay. On our channel, we got love and laughs and DIYs. 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 silly because we love to have a good time. There's nothing wrong with that. Humor does us so good. Now let's get into this DIY. Did I mention that this tear tray only cost me three bucks to make y'all? Well, I had them with painting materials, so if you want to count that. All right, so I'm going to try to go slow. I started off, I had cut some paint sticks down and we're going to put a screw in the bottom of this bucket. So, we need something to make it more sturdy. Now, this is how I cut it. The easiest way is to just show you. I put two down kind of sideways and then one straight across and it almost makes like an H shape. Can you see what I did there? Right in the center of that is where the screw is going to go. We also had to use two washers to make this. You see them laying on the table. There's a big one and a smaller one. 
that big one's going to go at the bottom of the bucket and the smaller one is going to lay right over top where the hole goes in. I slowed this part down so you could see exactly what I'm doing while I'm telling you. Now, these washers, like I said, you can get them at Walmart for like a whole pack of them for like 50 cents or a dollar. I took a plunger handle from the Dollar Tree and I used Waverly Antique Wax and a baby wipe to apply it. And then I just kind of let it dry for a moment. I had already taken my drill and my screw and ran it up through the bottom of that plunger because that way it's just so easy to put it on. You put the large washer on the bottom, then you're gonna put your screw through the bottom. Now, it took me with the help of my husband to get this on because you just need an extra set of hands to do this. It's tough to do it with one person. Um, because those paint stir sticks were bobbing around with just me by myself. So you see I've got my nail, I'm sorry, my screw, and I drilled it down through the bottom. All these washers do is kind of hold the screw in place and keep it sturdy. Now, this is what it's going to look like at this point. Then you're going to take the small washer and lay it on top. And if you have already pre-drilled that screw through that plunger all you have to do is just screw it down right on top of it see how easy that was now in all reality you don't even have to use those paint stir sticks or the washers but they help hold it very still i did use my drill and a small screwdriver from dollar tree just to kind of tighten it up but look how strong and tight this is it's not going anywhere y'all if you choose later on, you can take the plunger handle off and just use the bucket by itself. It doesn't matter. Now see how easy that was when we broke it down that way? I have one of these wood rounds that come from the Dollar Tree and we are gonna find the center of it because it's gonna be our tier. So what I did was measure across and it was 22 across. So I marked the 11 right in the center and then I went from side to side, and it was 13 across, so I marked the six and a half, and boom, we found our center. I did have to use an attachment on the end of my drill called a hole saw, and that's what makes the hole in the wood. So at this point, I've got my center marked out, and I'm going to lay my piece of wood down. This is what the whole saw looks like, by the way. <laughs> I'm gonna lay my piece of wood off of the table where I can get to the center, but I'm holding it sturdily, and I just go right down through my center point. The hole that I made was actually the exact size to slide right over the top of that plunger. I sanded it down just a little bit so it wouldn't be rough. Now I'm going to make a little pumpkin topiary that's going to go on the top tier. I have two of those little pumpkins that come from the Dollar Tree that have the little clips on them, and then one that has a gray and white gingham print. So what I'm going to do is paint this with my white chalk paint, and then I take a little owl. I got this owl at Crackle Barrel for 99 cents. It's actually a salt and pepper shaker. And I'm going to paint it with two coats of my white chalk paint. This is home decor brand chalk paint, but my container busted that it was in, so I have to keep it in a mason jar. But it is the home decor brand white chalk paint. I mixed up Harvest Orange and Chocolate Bar by Apple Barrel those paints and I'm going to paint these two little leaves that I got off of Amazon. They're little wood leaves and I will link them below. I also painted one of my pumpkins with that orange and brown color. And now I'm just taking Spanish moss and I'm sticking it in between where each of these pumpkins are laying so it will look like it's just sitting on a little bed of moss. And then I give it a little haircut and I took those wood leaves and stuck them on the front of the bottom pumpkin. Then I take that color chocolate bar by Apple Barrel and I'm just going to go in the little divots of the pumpkin. This is just for a little shading effect. 
Meanwhile, I took my little bucket outside and sprayed it two times with that hammered Rust-Oleum, and this is what it turned out looking like. Now we're gonna use Silver Lining by Waverly, Pewter by Apple Barrel, and my black chalkboard paint from the Dollar General, and two sponge brushes. I take the tip end of the sponge brushes that looks like a triangle and I dip it in the pewter gray on one side and the silver lining on the other side and I'm just going around in a random pattern and making little triangles all over the outside of my bucket. This is what's going to make the galvanized look. If you think about it, when you look at a galvanized tin, it has like a little triangle pattern all over it. So that's the first step that I do. And when that dries, I just kind of go in between with the opposite color. For example, if I have two dark gray, the pewter gray, I go in between with the silver lining. And I do this about three different times, but I let it completely dry in between the coats. Then on the third time, that I do this, I just kind of go wild with it and put my little triangles everywhere. But you can see, if I have two dark ones, I go in between with a light one. It's just a very random pattern. And when I used my black, I used it very sparingly. You only want to do a couple of the black spots on each side because if you look at a galvanized tin, it doesn't have a lot of black in it but it does have a little bit. It has more of the light color, I think, of anything. So when you put that spray paint down, that hammered Rust-Oleum spray paint, the pewter gray, or you can use elephant gray by Waverly, and the silver lining, which is the light color, it creates a galvanized pattern. I'm just going to let this part run so you can see how I did it over and over and over. I literally did it at least three times, if not four. But each time, it's very important to let it dry in between. And after I got all of my gray zone, that light silver lining color and that dark pewter color, that's when I put in a couple spots of the black. And then I even went over it again when it dried with those two gray colors again, just to tone down that black color a little bit. Because you want some black in there, but you don't want to go crazy with it. I mixed up a little bit of a brown and a red color by Apple Barrel to make rust, but I wasn't exactly very happy with that color. I'll show you on my finger because I used my finger to apply it just in a couple of spots where you think there would be rust, but I did not put very much of this on there at all. And this is what my bucket looks like when I'm finished. Now I'm simply gonna put everything back together. Remember, the large washer and the screw go through the bottom. And dumb dumb me forgot to put the paint sticks down. So after I had the plunger screwed back on there, I had to take it back off again <laughs> so we could do it correctly. And I put my little sticks down on the side and the one in the middle and screwed it back down in there. And I always use my drill just to make sure it's totally tight and sturdy. Now I'm gonna put some twine around my handles. So I just put a little bit of glue underneath the handle and then I wound the twine around and around all the way around that handle until I got to the other side and then I put just another little snippet of glue to hold it. I did this to both sides, both handles. Then I made sure to burn off any fuzzies that was on the twine. I took some Waverly Antique Wax and my small little chippy brush to go over that little white owl that we painted because he had little feathers all over him and when you run that antique wax over him, it just made the most beautiful presentation. Like you could see every little divot on that owl. 
I wiped off the excess with a baby wipe. I also ran the antique wax over my little pumpkin topiary and I also made a little twine finger bow where you just tie it around your fingers about five times and then you tie it in the center and it just makes a little simple bow. Look how cute this is. I found a random knob in my stash. I have no idea where it came from, but I painted it with that hammered Rust-Oleum spray paint and I'm just gonna hot glue it to the top and then I'm going to take the twine and wrap it where I had placed that right underneath it just to cover that little indention where that little ball went on the top and where the plunger started. For the florals, I used some of the maple leaves that came from the Dollar Tree. That's the orange ones. And I love those little berries or the beads that come with it. And I just placed it in different places in my bucket. And then I also used this light color of azaleas. I think they're so pretty. And I just kind of put them here and there. And I put in three velvet pumpkins. Well, one is gingham. And then a little pumpkin in the front. I spray painted four of the eyeballs that came from the Dollar Tree to make little feet and just stuck them on the bottom of the tray and then set everything back up. And that was pretty much it. I also placed a pine cone in there. There was a lot of room to put different stuff in my bucket and I love the way it turned out. I hope you guys like it. Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Will ever figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling We also have a winner from our contest of last week and you have 48 hours, two days to contact me. The winner is Patricia Little. You have two days to contact me, Patricia, via email. And then I'll have to move on to somebody else if y'all don't hear from you. My email is in the description box below. I love you guys. Here's the Squawk Squad. <laughs> My subscriber, Miss Diane, named them that. And I love it. Come here. Come here, girls. Come here. Oh, come here, pretty baby. Oh, there's my girl. Come here. Come here. Come here. You know you want to. Quit eating that sawdust. You heard me. That stuff will kill you. What about it, Pen? Honey, they ain't no millworms over there today. She's over here looking in her little box to see if there was millworms. Oh, Penny, Penny, Penny. Penny, Penny, Penny. I know, there's not any, baby. Mama's out. Hey. I didn't ask you. I'm gonna leave it up to Loretta to complain. Yep, stand right there and complain about it. That way everybody knows about it. Me and the Squawk Squad and the executive producer send you all our love. Until next time, be blessed, be healthy, and safe. Love y'all.